Welcome everyone, this is Zanta with Repo Products. Today's video is on Autodesk accounts, how to access it, and how to get into all of the information and the interface. This is a refresher to a previous video that I made back in November, and I wanted to make sure that we went ahead and redid it so that there are any updated changes to the design of the website. So to work with your Autodesk account and get into your account, manage all of your assets, you'll want to head over to your browser. I'm using Chrome, and you can use any browser you want, really. And if you just go to manage.autodesk.com, it will take you to your sign-in page. You want to sign in as your contract manager or software coordinator. If you are logged in as just an end user who has very limited rights, you will not see all of the functionality that's going to occur in this particular video. So I am going to log in as myself. And once I log in, the access to the site and the information is available. What you'll get is your home page. And on your home page, it tells you, you know, good morning or good afternoon or good evening in your name. Any recent product updates that are available that you can click right here to get access to it. Anything that you purchased recently will also be listed here. And then they give you a quick video admin tutorial here that you can just watch if you want to. There are links, as you can see, for each of the text descriptions to be able to get deeper into these specific topics if you need to. On the left-hand side, there is a dark vertical gray bar. And in that bar is your navigation. You have products and services where you can click the text, all products and services, and the page will refresh and it will list all the assets that you have for your company. And as you can see here, since we are resellers, we have a lot of software that's available. If I click Product Updates, it will list just the updates for all of the Autodesk products that we as a company own. We can also click Trials and get to that site, um, Page Refresh as well. Now, as I said earlier, you know, we have a, a long list of products because we are resellers. So the product updates page will take quite some time to update and list. For now, if I click the stop button and I'm going to click trials, I'm going to see if I can get it to stop its functioning. So here's a partial list of all the product updates that are available. And we're going to go ahead and refresh the page and then get back to say trials for example and it will list all the different trial software that you can get and play with for 30 days. If you want to access your list of users for your company you want to click user management and what happens is the page will refresh and it will list all the users that you have set up in your company's account. You want to set up the particular users that way you can edit their access rights. So, for example, I have one here for um, my company, DTA at RepoProducts.com. I have a, one for personal use, um, and I also have one as a fake student. That way I can do some demonstrations and whatnot. So I can always add new users by clicking Add right here, and you can choose to add users individually or bulk add. And all you really need to do is put in the email address, first name and last name, click Save and Continue, and then the page will refresh and give you access to that particular user. So for example, if I head, up, head into Edit Access for the DTA, you'll see there's the name of the user. Whether that person has the ability to download the software or not, that's just placing a check mark here. All the contract numbers that are associated and the software that's associated to those contract numbers are also tied here for support purposes. If you need a particular user to be able to use products, you want to make sure it's listed down here under products and services and you want to make sure that it's checked. So as you can see here, I have access to AutoCAD for Mac, Factory Design Utilities, off of um, two different um, lists, and then I have Revit Live as well. If I click Save after I make any necessary changes, then it'll give me that functionality. Once you click Save, the box should disappear and it will take you back to your list of users. The function and the purpose of using the user management portion is because most 
of the Autodesk products that you purchase, and most clients purchase them as a subscription named user basis, which means you buy the software for X amount of time, X number of seats that you need for those number of users in your company. And those seats need to be assigned to those users. If it's not assigned to the user, then they cannot use the software at all. The other reason um, you may need to work in this respect is, let's say, for example, somebody has left the company and you don't need them in the list of um, user management window anymore and you don't need them to have access to the software. All you have to do is click this little X right here and you will delete that user. All the um, assigned products and services will be freed up and it can be reassigned to somebody else. If I click under billing and orders, you can get to contracts and it will list all the contracts that you have, how long are the subscriptions and when do they expire. You can head into reporting and go to cloud services usage and it will list how your cloud credits are being used under what contract number and how many are remaining. You can also click by usage, uh, usage by the particular user. And you can see how many credits that person has used. Okay. Now, all of this for Autodesk accounts is meant for you to be able to know how to access the site, get access to your software, download it, look at the serial number, and so on. So a very typical thing somebody does is, I need access to, for example, Revit. They'll go to products and services. They'll then wait for the list to expand. They'll look for Revit. And depending on what you purchased, um, you may have to either dig all the way down to R for Revit, or you may have to go to AEC collection and then click the button to expand the list that's within that collection. Um, for me, I have it right here. It says Revit, and it says not for resale. You can click this little arrow right here, and it will expand and point down, and it opens up a drawer. And in there, it lists all the software that you have available to download and the serial number and product keys. So if I click View Downloads, it'll open up the Revit window, and it will list all the versions I can download and what platform and what language. And then I can choose to download it. Now, before I jump into this, when you are working with your Autodesk account, and you go back to your products and services page, scroll all the way up to the top, there is a little cogwheel right here. This allows you to specify the preferences of how you want to download the software and use and slash install the software. The default is install now. Now, I don't use this, and I tell our clients don't use this because it always seems to be a little finicky, especially if your web access is not stable. Same thing with this one. So I have mine set to browser download. And since I have it set to browser download, no matter what product I go to, and I go to select the download, I can click immediately browser download. Or I can click here where it says view all and change it to one of the other options. Keep in mind that when you are downloading Autodesk products, nine times out of 10, it's going to be a very big file or a big set of files. And so as an example, 3ds Max here, you are downloading 8.2 gigs of compressed data. That means there's going to be more than one file because each compressed file is typically two gigs. And so this one will most likely be four, gig, uh, four files or more to uh, equal the 8.2 gigs of compressed data. <clears throat> Since you're dealing with multiple files that you're downloading, when you click browser download, your browser download tip will tell you that it, it needs to start the download and to disable any pop-up blockers. And so mine has already been disabled, but if there was a failure in it, it would pop up in the upper right corner of your address URL box over here. You'll see a little red square with an exclamation point, and if you click it, you can enable that functionality. Since mine has already been enabled, you can see that this one has just two files for 3ds Max. So somehow they've been able to um, make the size of the files much smaller. Now, if I head over to my Windows Explorer and head over to my temp folder where I tell it to download or go to my downloads folder, 
you will see as it's progressing its download and it's not complete, it'll say unconfirmed. But once it is complete, it'll give you the name of the product, in this case 3ds Max, and it'll say um, whatever version, you know, Windows 64-bit, and it'll say 001.exe. <clears throat> and then the second one will be 002.exe. You want to make sure all the files are downloaded first, completely, before you double-click the first one. When you double-click the first one, it will go through the process of installing and decompressing the software. So it'll decompress the files and put them in the C drive. It will make a folder called Autodesk, and in there it will include a folder for that particular product, and all the installation setup files will exist in there. When it's complete, the actual setup window will start automatically, and then it will ask you to go ahead and start to install. So then you just need to install. If for some reason you do not see your serial number and product key on this particular page, you can always go back to the view downloads and click the tab where it says activation, and it will list the serial number and product key. Okay? So that's the one of the main things that people use the uh, site for, is to get access to the software, to be able to download it, look at the serial numbers, and go on from there. Others um, in the company may need to look at the actual contracts. And so, for example, I can click any one of these contracts, and you can see what the contract number is, how long the term is, when does it start, when does it end, and so on, who's in charge, and, and everything. And then, obviously, how many seats in the serial number and product key for function and for use. Um, and so, in a nutshell, this is the Autodesk Accounts page where you have access to obtaining your software and downloading and running it. Now, what about if you have software that is not subscription-based, it is network-based? Well, when you go back to your products and services, you can actually filter by the license type. And if I switch to network, it's only going to show me one because our reseller list only shows the one for networking. And if I expand the drawer for any of the products that are network-based, you will see a piece of text for generating the network license file. So the approach on how to install and uh, the network-based software, you have to go through generating a network license file. When you do this, it will list several things. You need to specify the what type of server you're running. You're either going to choose single or distributed never redundant. So for now, just for the sake of example, I'm going to click select under single server. Here you have to put in the exact name of the computer, the server, that is going to hold the license management software called LM Tools. You also have to input the exact MAC address of the NIC card for that machine that the software is tied back to. You then have to click the plus symbol and click select all to grab everything in this list that is network based. When you do that and you click add selected, it knows you're going to want to create a network license file to contain all of those assets. And then once you've got that license file, you need to download LM Tools, the latest version, and install it on your server, and then install the license file and configure. I have a separate video just on the network-based installation of uh, Autodesk products. So you can always go to the YouTube channel and find them as well. Okay, But in a nutshell, you just go to Google, type in LM Tools latest version, get to the first result, and then look for what operating system, 9 times out of 10. Most of our clients are running network uh, Windows-based, so I click Windows. The page will refresh, and you will see you can pick 32-bit or 64-bit. Most server operating systems are 64-bit. And for the latest version, which is 11.16.2.0, you need to be running uh, Windows Server 2008 uh, R2 or higher. And you can also, by the way, install it on a Windows 7, 8, or 10 box. So if I click right here for 64-bit, it will automatically download the file, as you can see here. So once it's finished downloading, install it on your server.
okay and then refer to the video that I made uh, on how to do a network based installation going back to the Autodesk accounts home page again um, you want to go through the process of just looking at everything here reading and understanding what all your navigation functions are you have up here in the upper right hand corner a little bell that gives you any notification alerts the help system and then your Autodesk account here that you can even look at your profile so when you click my profile it will list your profile all of the pertinent data and any links that you have set up as well and that's it that's Autodesk accounts and uh, if you have any questions on how to access or use any of the features please don't hesitate to contact us and we will help you out thank you very much for watching